Time has come to plug in my HP in ears. Yeah. Power, audio and microphone. Hold on. Keyboard. Hold up. Mouse. Wait a minute. HDMI. Something ain't right. Power it up. And put in our disc. I knew something was wrong. I knew something special about it. Howdy y'all. Welcome to the DIY channel. Well, welcome back to the DIY channel. This has gone from junkyard to gaming glory. What if we took a laptop with a broken screen and a broken NES and somehow tried to stuff the motherboard from out of that into the empty shell of that? We need to see if this laptop can run bare bones with no keyboard, no mouse, no screen, no battery. And if it can boot, we're on to a winner. And that should be the power switch. What? What is this Windows? This looks like Vista. Oh yeah, Windows Vista, alright. Gross. Yes! Yes, yes, yes! No! Bruh! They really didn't want us putting Windows XP on their Windows Vista flagship laptop. Let's install Linux. Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks a lot like XP. It's not exactly the same. Okay, so we need to take out our motherboard. Take out the hard drive, take out the RAM, take out the Wi-Fi. Take off the trim. Motherboard screws. Soundboard. Take Wi-Fi enabling board. Wi-Fi aerials. Our power adapter and our USB port. Oh, that's cool. It separates from our USB and it has a mounting bracket. I wouldn't mind chopping the body up to keep the bits that we need because it's got a lot of good mounting points. A bit of a dust filter. I've already changed the thermal paste on our GPU and CPU. It's a decent cooler bi-directional for the GPU and the CPU separate cooling but same fan pretty clever look at the size of that heat transfer pipe also cooling the chipset as well All right, let's just drop this back in for a minute and mark out where we can cut it now oh, yes let's unplug our USB our power cable Pretty damn close. Just need to chop the back out and you can hang the board out of it. Burning it. Bang on 19 mil. Air protection is a must. A cheap diamond blade will cut through plastic like a hot knife through butter. Looks alright. Close. Very close. Battery terminals are in the way. Technically speaking, diamond blades aren't for cutting metals, but that doesn't mean they won't cut them. Well, I think if we follow that line along there to give us a nice clean edge. easier to clean the burrs while they're still warm. If you let them cool all the way they're quite hard to snap off but if you do it straight away you'll burn your fingers. Oh we're getting close y'all. If we take that all the way down and we chop that right out this will allow for much better airflow on the GPU side of the cooler. Grinders can be kind of scary and dangerous. A Dremel is a much safer option. But one way you can get used to a grinder is to practice on some scrap bits.
Let's have a look. How do we do? That's pretty good. Okay, so we just need to notch the back and the card reader. We're going to have to flatten all that off. We're so close. Oh yeah, that is so close. Take out the groove from there to there. That little groove there. Oh yeah boy. Super clean. She's got a bit of a tailpipe now, but we know it's going to have good cooling. Pretty happy with that. That is what you call a tight fit. So if you have a crazy idea guys, just go with it. So what I want to do is use the laptop's casing to secure it all together and to cover up our exhaust pipe. This will work perfectly to tie everything together. You really can't tell from the front. Can't say the same for the back. Before we screw down our motherboard, we need power and our third USB. There's our power. Yep. Looks all right to me. Now we'll put on beep test. Try and figure out which direction the switch works in. There's two main types of switches. Switches that latch when they're switched on and momentary switches that are only on while the button is pressed. The reason why this is beeping is because these two are connected together but across the other direction is not. We can confirm this by process of elimination. Yeah, and then we just need to solder our wires to across there. Technically, we only need to do one side. By pressing the button, we can tell that this is a momentary push button switch. Possible to take that off. So if we swap our power onto our reset, power is a push button, and now our reset is the toggle. And we should mount them boards up too. Drill very lightly, you don't want it to bust through into the motherboard. It's tapping in. Just about any screw will work on plastic as long as you drill the hole slightly smaller than the screw. As long as it's not touching the motherboard, miles off. And it's not in the way of our hard drive. We can even still turn our Wi-Fi on and off. And I'm hoping that the lights on this will shine into our power switch block. Set up our Wi-Fi and set up our Wi-Fi aerials. aerials in the sky. Let's get the RAM in. Push in. And then push down. Good old HDD. I'd love to put a SSD in this one day. But for now, this is a zero dollar build. Clips in that way. Aerials can sneak out there. By using the piece I cut off from the NES base as a spacer, I got the sound ports to sit flush. Someone had accidentally cut off the mount points for this back plate, but luckily this little soundboard will help hold it on. Bugger. It's a bit wonky that thing. Drill it off the motherboard. The middle one is a microphone. And that's a speaker. And now we can run a headset.
power we want it to be stealthily in here and this one needs to be upside down it was really hard to know where to put this so I just guessed and then I'll re-drill it in the right spot once I've got an idea where it's going to sit now we need to move our screw so the way you read the vernier accurately is you go by the nearest one which is seven mil and then where it lines up is the point so we're on the one so that's 7.1 millimeters so if we move over eight millimeters we'll be well and truly safe i just need to clear off the lump and make room for the wire on the back of the circuit board and then we can mark where we want to be yeah that's pretty good that is beautiful now our usb attach it back here and use our extendo yeah that will do as a temporary you can solder these on put some plugs on and then it's easy to detach them i've got some spade bit crimp connectors but they're a bit too large so what i'll do is i'll try and make the wire a bit thicker and if i have to i'll solder them on and we can twist them double back them give us some extra thickness and slip on our connector nah. it's only pretty solid now you only want a little as but look what we've got to solder to much easier to use a tiny little bit than all that i'm just going to get some solder on these Oh yeah, that's good. If you can fill it at the back, you know it's gone right through. Slip our heat shrink over. It's always good to pre-solder your wires before you connect them to a circuit board. This is called tinning, and it really helps to have flux core solder. So now that's one solid unit. Nip off the access. We only want a little bit. We want it to be like that get a nice clean iron a little bit of solder on it that's done that's soldered on by using a piece of the plastic from the case i managed to make a hold down to secure the wires in place so now we can hook them up to our spade connectors and if we plug her in and if we press our power blue light it's gonna spin up spinning up yes it works we literally just picky back onto the switch and with connections so it's still easy to take out our motherboard this is gonna sit in here and i want it to be in here It fits absolutely perfectly, but seeing it in there doesn't really look the best. It's got a slope to it. I want to see if my USB CD drive will fit in here instead. That is way cleaner. Plug our CD drive in here. It's a nice wedge. That's got it. Nice, tight, tidy. Hit the power. That looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good to me. That CD drive's bloody mint. This one's falling apart anyway. I need to cover this. I've cut the shell off the laptop. It ain't half bad, really. So I'm gonna tape this on temporarily so I can remove it and then glue it from the back. Bit of epoxy. Give it a good mix, 50-50 ratio. Just 
just enough. Well, let that set overnight, and once it's hard tomorrow, put it all together, peel off the tape, and job's done. And we'll have ourselves a free NES gaming PC. So our back plate is all glued, solly as. A little bit of residue from the tape, but that peeled off all right. Peeled it off last night before the glue completely cured. And we can clean it up with some alcohol. It all fits together nicely. This corner screws, this corner screws, and now this corner screws from here. So the only corner left that's unsecure is this corner. And I want to put the ports in, even though they won't be doing anything. I think it will look better to have the ports and have a hole there. It's all four corners. Look, we can lift it up by the lid. Chin port free. The docking station. Cool. Is this uh, XP4 notebook media docking station? Brought my HP NES into the docking station. Hook up one plug, but the docking station has larger speakers and another subwoofer built in. Oh, you yeah, know that come up pretty good. A little bit of um, epoxy got through. It's better than exposed circuit boards with that ugly opening where the screen mount used to sit. <gasps> Shit! Okay guys, don't use alcohol on your NES to clean it. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Must be time to play some games. Well, Mario looks amazing in HD. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll do a follow-up video on how to configure all the software. We're in Linux, so it's pretty in-depth. Cheers all, see you on the next one.